Hi folks, Bob Serva at Fusion Firearms. Uh, today we're going over guide rod basics. Um, I know a lot of people will think that, you know, learning about the guide rods and, and, and the different types of guide rods that go in the 1911 is real elementary. Um, it is kind of a basic uh, item to the 1911, but not so elementary. Um, we, with all of our sales channels out there, we get feedback from folks all over the, the country. And <laughs> to be honest with you, we get an awful lot of emails on how do I install my guide rod? You know, will this work in my guide, my gun, those type of things. So um, we're, we're gonna do some real basic um, video clips on the guide rods here. And this one, we're just going over general guide rods and, and you know, what, what's available. Uh, the next uh, clips, we'll have a couple of smaller clips showing you how to install each one of them and what the more practical uses are in that for those uh, different type of guide rods. So we'll start with, uh, most 1911s will start with a standard GI version of the guide rod, which will be a GI guide rod and then a, a GI end cap. Um, the end caps come in all different varieties and colors. You'll have uh, most of the common are going to be black and, and stainless. Um, the checkered um, are very popular, same with the Fusion logo style, we saw a lot of those. Um, we also have different caps with all different types of logos. Um, now the logos on the end, we have them like um, U.S. Air Force, U.S. Army, USMC, Coast Guard, um, Police, um, you know, all different types, smiley faces, those type of things. Um, so people like to spice their guns up with the uh, end caps. Now, remember, you can't use a GI style end cap with a full length guide rod because, of course, your gun can't actuate because it can't go through. I know that sounds kind of elementary. Again, it's a question we get almost every day. Why doesn't this work? Well, it doesn't work because obviously your gun has to actuate back and forth and needs a hole through the end cap to work properly, to function properly. So, Again, you'll have uh, the uh, GI version. You also have a commander version in the in the, uh, the GI style guide rod. Um, so the commander you'll notice is is noticeably smaller. Um, the end caps again are smaller on the commander. Um, a commander guide guide rod end cap. Uh, you can use them in a, in a GI. Some people do. Um, we usually we have both available: the standard GI length and the commander length and we have them in all the different engraved ends, the yeah. different texture ends, um, also the uh, radius. We have different ends that are radius. We have different ends that have chamfers. We have some ends that are flat. Um, some people like the flat plane ends because they want to do their own engraving on the end caps, um, their initials or something like that. Um, and we also have the barrel bushings um, to go with them. So you can get like a chamfered barrel bushing and a chamfered, um, end cap again it's all about the style what you're trying to do with your 1911 what you what you want to do with it um, we also have those available in the commander bushings which you'll see the commander bushings are shorter they have a shorter wheelbase to them so um, we also have them available in a thick flange version which is you know 125 thousandths 130 thousandths right around there or the standard uh, flange thickness which is right around 93 thousandths 95 thousandths and we also have corresponding end caps with the uh, button on the end uh, of those lengths. So, can you use a thick flange uh, barrel or you know barrel bushing with a standard flange end cap? Sure can. If that's what you like, if that's what what looks good to you on your gun, go right ahead. Generally, people will take a, a thick flange, change out their barrel bushing to a thick flange. They'll go with a thick flange. Um, end cap also just to match it so it all matches you know a lot of times again they'll go with a chamfered here they'll also go with a chamfered on this or radius or whatever they like some people just like the flat look um, so they'll go with a you know full flat face with a flat end plug so that's really uh, what it is in the in the GI versions and then there's a lot of choices to pick from and then you'll have the full length guide rods which a lot of people will change out to a full length guide rod and in the full length guide rods you'll have one piece full length guide rods and you'll have two piece. What's the difference? The, the shaft of this is integral and you can't remove it. Okay, that's the one piece. They use the exact same end caps. End cap with a hole in it. On a two piece guide rod, you'll notice there's a hex in the end for the wrench, hex hole. 
all right? And that's to unscrew the secondary piece out. And it, whoop, there goes my wrench. And that will allow you to remove the rod section of the full length guide rod. Now the full length guide rod, um, some people, they like the one piece um, better than the two piece. Um, I like the two piece, I've always used the two piece. Um, it's easier to disassemble the, the, the firearm. So I, I generally go with the, the two piece style. Um, these are available in um, officer's length. Uh, they're available in commander. Uh, they're available in the five inch, the six inch, and all the way out to a seven inch. Uh, we also have them available in black. Um, now the black, we don't just black oxide these, we actually, um, we actually uh, use our black shield nitromelanite process, nitrocarburizing to uh, coat the rods and the end caps so the finish will hold up better for you. Black oxide, generally within the first box of ammo you shoot, you'll start seeing you know, noticeable wear on the guide rod. And, it's kind of normal because you're getting so much, um, you know, resistance from the guide rod uh, back and forth in the in the end cap. Um, so it, it, it takes a lot of beating. So uh, eventually the, the black will start to wear on those. So if, it, if it's something that you don't like to see the black wear, now will our black shield hold up better than the black oxide? Most definitely. It will hold up much better. But eventually it's still going to wear because of all the abuse it takes. So a lot of guys will go with a stainless guide rod. Uh, in those applications. It's just, um, you know, easier to take care of. You don't have to worry about the finish and all those things. So, um, also, basically, our guide rods that we make from uh, even the black guide rods are stainless steel. Um, we make those out of stainless steel also, and then we, we overcoat. So, it's, uh, it is protected and it won't rust on you. Um, the end caps, you'll find out... Um, we basically have two style of end caps with the hole in the end for the full length guide rods. Um, one is a, uh, uh, basically a commander length, which you can run in the five inch, and this is pretty a generic length that we use across the board on all of the uh, full length guide rods other than the officers. And then you'll have a, a six inch length, uh, which is like this, it's longer. Uh, the six inch length, we only counter bore the spring tunnel. Uh, we only counter bore that down an inch. So we leave about an inch of, of material in there uh, on the counter bore so that you can use five inch springs in a six inch gun. Um, the reason we do that is because if you look for six inch springs, there really isn't a lot of availability of six inch springs. So this way it gives you a huge availability of different weights for different calibers um, and you can use the full length guy rod system in the, in the six and seven inch um, guns. So that's about it to wrap it up for your general overview of guide rods. Um, now we'll get into some short clips on just specific guide rod applications and how to, how to apply those and put them in your, your pistol, your 1911 pistol. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to give us an email through FusionFirearms.com. Have a great day.